Hello, I'm Tiffany Parks, and this is A Bittersweet Moment with Katie Sewell. Hello, this is The Bittersweet Life. I'm Katie Sewell, and this is your midweek bittersweet moment. Now, this past weekend, I was in Richmond, Virginia for a podcasting festival, and I met a lot of amazing people. And if any of you listening are from those delightful two days, it was a pleasure meeting you. Thanks for joining me here, and I look forward to getting to know you a lot better. And I have some big news from that festival, some really, really, really big news, but we're going to be sharing that with you in the next few weeks. So if you aren't subscribed to this show yet, you should just do it because you do not want to miss this update in the updates that are to come after the fact. But here's a special surprise about this particular bittersweet moment. Today, I am joined by my co-host, Tiffany Parks, live in Rome. Hello. Thanks for joining me. (laughs) Hello. Of course. (laughs) I invited Tiffany to join me because I wanted to give new listeners and new newer listeners, I guess, new-ish listeners, a quick overview of what this show is all about. It's been a while since we've done it. And since I met so many cool people at the podcasting festival who might be joining us here, I figured why the heck not do a little uh, overview of this show and how it came to be and how to navigate our giant web of episodes since we've been around for so long. So just the brief facts I am from Seattle. I am currently in Seattle. I'm pretty much from here. And over the course of this show, which, as I said, has lasted about 10 years, I've lived in San Francisco, uh, did a little time in New Orleans. I've lived in Seattle, of course. And most importantly, perhaps, I lived in Rome, Italy. And that's where this show began. And that's also where my co-host Tiffany lives. She's also from the Seattle area. She's a childhood friend of mine. We met on the school bus in the sixth grade. But she moved to Rome almost two decades ago now. And I always like to say that you move there without a plan, just a desire to stay no matter what it took and managed to somehow pull that off. Miracle. I still don't know how it happened. (laughs) Well, we've gone over it a little bit in this show. So if you do have an interest Mm -hmm. in moving abroad... She's got lots of tips here. But so this show begins when I find myself temporarily in Rome for one year. And Tiffany had been there for what, almost 10 years when I moved? Yeah, I think I think nine or 10. Yeah. Maybe. So when I maybe nine when we started. Right. So and I move on to her block. And if you go back to episode one, which I always encourage people to do, that's where you'll find us. Her as a very experienced expat me as the bumbling idiot who has just arrived and is excited, but also freaked out and definitely trying to figure out how to navigate this new world that I flung myself into. But also like just how you phrased that made me realize that I was the experienced expat and you were the newbie expat. You were the experienced radio producer and I was someone who had zero experience podcasting or doing any other kind of audio work. And so we kind of, we were both newbies and both experts in our different arenas. Well, that's so true. That's a good point. It's a very good point because I forget now that you're such a podcasting pro that there was a time, (laughs) you know, there was a time when you really didn't know what you were doing. You weren't even used to me sticking a microphone in your face at all. And that's what's so interesting, I think, about how the show starts, if you go back and listen, is how um, quickly we find a rhythm. It's interesting because you go to a podcasting festival all weekend and you you talk so much about the ins and outs of how stuff is made and and all the practice that it takes and all the knowledge. And, and you meet people throughout the whole weekend that are of various levels. You know, some people are really experienced. Some people are just starting out. And it gives it kind of an excited energy. But it also reminds you of how much there is to learn, and particularly if you've been in the industry as long as me, a fine reminder of how much you have learned that, you know, over life, sometimes it's hard to mark what progress you've made, you know, and uh, and so it's True. nice to be reminded that you've come a long way. So I think one of the things that they talked about over this podcasting weekend is that if a show is going to survive, it needs to be adaptable. You can't just have a plan for I mean, you can just have a plan for one year if that's all you want to do or three episodes if that's all you want to do. But if it's something that you intend to maintain, 
the show has to be able to morph and adapt and the concept of it has to become wider, I guess, or not stilted in some way. And I think that's why I always have such a hard time describing this show. But if you had to, if you had to describe to somebody who has never listened to an episode, what would you tell them to do from here? What would I tell them to do? How do they get to know this show? Or what would you tell them to expect? <laughs> I guess I would. <laughs> that's a hard one. Um, I guess I would just ex- tell them to expect lots of unscripted but very well curated conversations about life and how to how to create the life that suits your personality needs desires wants you know you always say let go of the rope or ditch the script we do not have to live the life that our parents lived or that our siblings are living or that anyone else has set out for us and who expects us to do and you know clearly moving abroad is one way to do things in your own way but it's clearly not the only way we talk about many different aspects of living life on your own terms. One friend I was talking to about this said that they would define it as a show about living abroad and broadly living, which I thought was kind of cute in that catchphrase like way. That. But then I love that. <laughs> <laughs> living abroad and broadly living. And then you throw in a few muses, mainly famous writers, because we have a lot of famous writers and scholars mm-hmm. on the show. And then you also throw in a hearty dose of Rome or even Italy, the country itself. It's sort of almost like we explore these themes through the lens of Italy and its history. Exactly. Yeah, it is a big part. It's not, you couldn't call this a show about Italy or about Rome. I don't even think you can still call it a show about Italy the expat experience. That's a big part of it. Like you said, it's a lens, but it's not the whole picture. Another guy once described it to me as the New York Times Sunday magazine. (laughs) You know, it's going to be smart and entertaining, but you also aren't quite sure what you're going to get from week to week. (laughs) It is why I hope if you're a brand new listener, you will come to find that it's one of your favorite shows. And I want to say another thing. This is a show, it's not random chat. Like, it's not Tiffany and I getting together to talk about what happened to us last week, even though I did start this by mentioning I was at a podcasting festival in Richmond, Virginia. We do every single show on a topic. So when you look through 10 plus years of episodes and you think, where to begin? You can go in and search for topics that interest you. There is a theme to every episode. I also say that Maybe you've been looking for some podcast, you're feeling like you're a little out of things. I am very proud of where this show began. You know, sometimes you start projects and you think, you tell people, you're like, yeah, just, but don't go all the way back to the beginning, you know, (laughs) just, uh, you know, join us around episode number 25. I, I don't feel that way about this show at all. I think that right out of the park, I think we started well. So I always do say, don't be afraid to start at the beginning if you feel so inclined. And if you're really in love with Rome or you're really in in love with the idea of one day moving abroad or you did live abroad once, I think season one really resonates with people in both of those experiences. Yeah. And don't forget, Katie, that on our website, we have categories of episodes. So if you're really, really interested in, let's say, Rome, there's a whole category and all of our Rome episodes should be there. Same with, you know, expat life, author interviews, what have you. So if you're interested in a particular topic or sort of area of topics, you can go that route as well. So I thought I would play just for fun. And I I don't know if you need me to play this for you, Tiffany, or if you've heard it hundreds and hundreds (laughs) of times. (laughs) But I thought it would be fun to play the intro because a lot of things about crafting a podcast is also figuring out how the podcast opens And we decided to open this show way back in the day with a sound montage that is a montage of Rome. So let me play that. And then, Tiffany, I want to hear which sounds in that you think are the most quintessential or what tone you think it sets. Okay, so let's hear it. Let's hear it. Welcome to Rome. This is The Bittersweet Life with Katie Sewell and Tiffany Parks. 
So that's our introduction, our tone setting introduction to the show. Tiffany, what stands out to you? Probably probably the church bells. I think if I had to go with a number one, it's gotta be the church bells. I mean, so many of those sounds, if you're in the center of Rome at least, even in the outskirts of Rome, you're just going to hear, period, on any given day. So they're all absolute necessary elements of the Rome soundscape. It wouldn't be Rome without one of those sounds. But I, I got to go with the church bells. That's good. I mean, what I love about that intro even still today is that I think it not only captures Rome, where I was living at the time when we started this show, but it's this beautiful mix of the iconic of Rome and the very mundane. It mixes the water from the fountains and the sound of ambulances and the bells. But you also hear a woman walking down the cobblestones and you hear a man just cough and clear his throat and all of those things. And that's what I kind of think is this show is it's a mix of sort of the grandiose and the iconic ideas of life, but it's mixed with all the very common elements of disappointment Absolutely. And, and, and et cetera. I should also mention that if you, when you heard the other intro, the one that played at the very beginning of this show, we have a different intro for the, the bittersweet moments, which are the mini episodes that happen on Thursday. It's fundamental. Mm -hmm. There's a Monday show and a Thursday show. Uh, that different intro that happens on Thursday. Tiffany, have I, have I ever mentioned to you that that intro is a mix of all the places that I've lived since doing this show? So it's San Francisco, New Orleans, Rome. Not so much I Seattle, did, honestly, but... I did know that it was... I did know that there was both San Francisco and New Orleans in there. And Rome. There is Rome too, right? Yeah. yeah. It's mm -hmm. all three. I think we need to redo it, though. I really do. I think we need it to be Seattle and Rome. Yeah, it's probably about time. Or well, just Seattle, you know, maybe. Nah, Since you got Monday's mix it. show is Rome and Yeah, maybe. Maybe. But but welcome to Seattle. I mean, <laughs> I was just traveling and we'll end with this idea. I was just traveling as you know, coming back from Richmond, Virginia, and you talk to tend to talk to people in the airport or on planes sometimes. And mm -hmm. every person I talk to, they, they say, oh, where are you from? Or this, even at the conference. And you say, Seattle, have you ever? And they'll be like, oh, I've never been to Seattle. And I said, well, is it even on the list? And they'll say, well, I mean, it's kind of rainy there, isn't it? So I, I, I came to feel you, like Seattle is not on, on anyone's list. It's weird because I told you in Rome, it's the same. Italians don't go there. They all go to LA. They all go to San Francisco and Las Vegas. Nobody goes to Seattle. And I think in the case of Europeans, they have an idea that it's much farther away than like a San Francisco when of course it isn't. Um, but that it's like really far up North and really cold. People think Seattle, it, not people in America, obviously, but people in Italy think Seattle is this like frigid Canadian, you know, up in the mountains, you know? And so that's my excuse for them. I don't know. Americans, I feel like, I feel like, yeah, they should be going to Seattle. It's gorgeous. It is. It's so beautiful. And I'm in, I'm sitting in shorts right now and it's October. It's not cold. <laughs> wow. I know. That's awesome. All right. Well, so that's just like a hint of what you'll find here, but we are very open to hearing your stories, hearing what resonates with you. You can always write to us at bittersweetlifepodcast at gmail.com. And I do want to say, Tiffany, since you're here, reminder to those of you who are listening and longtime listeners who've heard of this before, we are doing a book giveaway during the month of October for yeah. this beautiful copy of Pride and Prejudice. Tiffany, you know more about it. Tell us real quick. Well, it's from the Penguin Clothbound Classics Collection, which if you like pretty books, you have already heard of and seen. They are so beautiful. They're really sturdy, cloth-bound books with foil decorations. They're designed by Coralie Bickford Smith, and they are simply beautiful. And Pride and Prejudice, I think, is one of those classics that most people anyway love or have a soft spot for. And even if maybe they have another copy of it, you know, it's nice to have a beautiful copy of a book that you like or maybe even love. So we are giving away a copy of this. It is brand new, never been read. However, Katie and I have uh, put a little dedication in the front and I have even very, very faintly in pencil underlined my favorite line. I love that. And I can't remember what it is. So whoever wins I, yeah. is going to have to remind, <laughs> remind me what the line is. And winning this book is open to anyone, anywhere in the world. All we're asking for is a minimum donation of $5. 
uh, in support of this show. If you already love this show, this is a great way to just throw a $5 bill in our little tip jar and maybe win this gorgeous book coming yeah, to Yeah, which your is door. worth a lot more than $5. And I should mention also, we had originally launched this giveaway in September and we had said, you know, if you donate in September, but we, you know, this episode order got kind of switched around. And so it was, uh, it was not really publicized until October. So we just want to put out there, if you did donate in September, of course, it will still count for yes. this giveaway. Anyone I donating in September or October. Yeah, I got your names already. And once, once the month of October ends, we're going to throw all those names in the hat and fluff them around and draw the lucky winner. We also have one other book giveaway, If You Could Live Anywhere by Melody Warwick. And we've given one copy away. We have one more left. And for that, just send us an email. Tell us your story about your quest to find somewhere cool and interesting to live. And we will not only maybe share those stories on the show, but you'll be also entered to win a free copy of this book to do that. All right, Tiffany, thank you so much for joining me. Oh, of course. My pleasure. And welcome to those of you new listeners. I hope you will stay and poke around. As I said, don't be afraid to go back to the beginning. And in, until next time, this is The Bittersweet Life. I'm Katie Sewell. I'm Tiffany Parks. Join us again. Bye. Do you have a topic you want us to explore? Send your requests. We love to hear what you want to know. Visit thebittersweetlife.net and contact us with your questions, your adventures, your observations, your favorite episodes. We love hearing from you. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Just search for The Bittersweet Life Podcast. Bye.